In this presentation, I'm going to discuss the management of a rigid cavus deformity or cavoverus deformity. But in particular, I want to focus on how to correct this without resorting to a triple arthrodesis, which is commonly used as part of correction of a rigid hind foot deformity. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate the use of tendon transfers, balancing the deformity on the foot, and then the use of a calcaneus and midfoot osteotomy to complete the correction. You'll notice on the video the severe atrophy of the leg, severe rigid varus deformity and equinus, and no mobility of the subtalar joint. That hind foot is fixed in varus. The adductor varus component is also very stiff. So I begin with the posterior tibial tendon transfer. This is done by extending the incision not to the navicular, but all the way out to the cuneiform. You want as long a piece of tendon as is possible. And if you cut it at the level of the navicular, your tendon length will often not be long enough. So I'm going to go subperiosteally all the way over the cuneiform and take off a longer piece or strip of fascia, periosteum, and tendon. Once I've got the tendon dissected, it, you can see there I'm cutting down onto the cuneiform. I'll then elevate it from underneath the cuneiform and then finally go to cut the tendon, which as I've said, gives me a nice long piece to work with. Once you've got your tendon separated, you need to now begin to isolate it at the medial malleolus. You will see the flexor digitorum longus there. And now by lifting up the posterior tibial tendon, you recognize that you've got to release the flexor retinaculum. So I begin by doing that directly on top of the FDL tendon, releasing the retinaculum. And if you don't do so, the tendon will not easily pass behind the malleolus. So I'm going to <clears throat> release the tendon gradually dissect it off until it is quite free and mobile. Once I'm done with my tendon release, I can then start to focus on the other soft tissue release, which is the plantar fascia release. I'm going to make a small incision on the plantar medial aspect of the foot rather than on the plantar surface. I open up the foot, dissect it and then use a scissors to split all the way across. It's a complete fasciotomy and then palpate under the skin to make sure that you've cut both bundles of the fascia. Now through an incision in the distal third of the leg, pull on your posterior tibial tendon so that you can palpate the tendon at the muscular tendinous junction and there you see it under my clamp. You want to gradually pull on that to make sure that it is not adherent to any of the other tendons and if you can pull it through your incision. In this case I'm going to show it to you again because the tendon was completely stuck and I had to release it completely from the soft tissue and you can see where and why it's caught on the posterior aspect of the soft tissue all the way down to the back of the tibia. So I had to dissect this off the tibia. There you can see that small piece of tenderness attachment onto the back of the tibia. That's not a piece of the posterior tibial tendon. Now my tendon is quite free at the muscular tenderness junction. I want to now remove all the soft tissue off the tendon and I need to maintain a thin stump of the tendon so that it passes easily through my drill hole on the lateral side of the foot. In order to do so, I'm going to cut or split the tendon in half at the proximal stump so that I've got a nice narrow tendon to work with to pass it into the foot. Once I've cut it, I'll start my suture on the tendon and you can see the suture being applied here. In order to prevent the tendon from bunching up, you need to create a small noose around your suture so that it grabs the tendon and prevents it from bunching up. There you can see 
I'm passing that little circular noose of suture around the tendon. And as I pull on it, uh, the tendon is now going to go quite flat or tight at the tip. And it won't bunch up as you pass it from the leg into the foot. From here, we're going to go into the distal side of the leg. And you'll note that the tendon passage must be gradual. You don't want this to pass from medial to lateral at a right angle. My incision goes directly over the fibula. I cut right onto the fibula there. And then I'm going to open this up and simply lift up the soft tissue with my finger and I'm palpating the interosseous membrane and lift the soft tissue off between the fibula and the tibia so that all I have now is the interosseous membrane. I take a nice large clamp once I've got the interosseous membrane clear and I pass this clamp directly underneath the tibia. The clamp now goes under the tibia from lateral to medial and be careful with this because you don't want to injure the neurovascular bundle. It must pass so that it comes out directly posteromedial. Grab hold of your tendon and make sure that you create a large tunnel so that your window is large enough for passage of the tendon without any potential for constriction later on. Once we're done with that, we start with the calcaneus. My incision starts at the tip of the fibula, one centimeter below the tip, and extends at a 45 degree angle obliquely. Be careful of the sural nerve and make sure that your subcutaneous dissection protects the nerve. Here you can see I'm using the back of the knife blade to push the soft tissue away and then I'll retract it and then I can easily cut straight down onto the bone without risking damage to the sural nerve. Through this incision, I'm going to do not only the osteotomy, but also the perineus longus to brevis tendon transfer. So your incision needs to be long enough to accomplish both the osteotomy and the exposure of your perineal tendons. The osteotomy is going to be not only a wedge, but also translation. Here you see the perineal tendons where I'm going to suture the longest of the brevis. Note how hypertrophied the longest tendon is compared with the brevis, which is not being used, and the muscle is atrophied. I will suture the two together, and once you've sutured it completely, you can cut the longest. Don't cut the long tendon before you've got your sutures in, otherwise you will have the incorrect tension on the uh, perineus longus. It's much easier to do your tenodesis or transfer once you've actually put your sutures in. Now you can see the longus has been cut and separated away from the brevis and that completes the tendon transfer. From here we'll go to the calcaneal osteotomy which is a wedge as I'm demonstrating, a lateral slide and a slide cephalad in order to correct the pitch angle. So once again, I'm going to take a wedge. I'm going to close the wedge. I'm then going to translate the calcaneus laterally and then translate it cephalad. I usually take out about an eight millimeter wedge with a six millimeter translation and about a six millimeter cephalad translation, depending on uh, the pitch angle of the calcaneus. Here you can see the wedge is being removed. It doesn't look very much bone is being removed, but actually uh, the saw takes care of that. It is about uh, an eight millimeter wedge. The bone is removed. And then once you've taken the bone out, insert a lamina spreader to make sure that the soft tissue on the medial side is completely free. Once you know that it is free, you can now easily close your osteotomy, as you see I'm doing here. The osteotomy is going to be closed and translated laterally at the same time. I can also translate a cephalad and I use two large guide pins in order to insert this into my tuberosity, usually from slightly lateral, which aids in the compression of the calcaneal tuberosity. So my guide pin is inserted I'm going to use the guide pin to help as a joystick to pull the calcaneus laterally, close it, and move it cephalad. 
Both pins are then inserted, and I like to use two screws when I'm taking out a large wedge from the calcaneus. Now I want to make sure before I put my screws in that I don't have a very tight tarsal tunnel. If you take out an excessive wedge, you run the risk of putting tension on your tibial nerve and creating a tarsal tunnel syndrome. So palpate the soft tissue immediately and also make sure that you've corrected the varus. Here we'll put the screws in and what you'll see is that we've completely corrected that hindfoot varus deformity uh, with the soft tissue release medially and the tendon transfer. Now we go dorsally. On the dorsal surface of the foot, I'm going to find the superficial perineal nerve and its branches, as well as the deep perineal nerve, which is being retracted. You can see the extensor hallucis brevis in the distal aspect of the incision. And I'm going to cut straight down onto the periosteum and use a guide pin, which you see there, to mark out the osteotomy with electrocautery. This is usually at the navicular cuneiform joint, where I'm going to remove a fairly large wedge, dorsal and medial, but no wedge is taken out the cuboid. This is a straight cut into the cuboid. If you've not done this procedure frequently, I suggest making two incisions and doing the cuboid osteotomy separately rather than trying to do it as one cut extending from the dorsal central aspect of the foot all the way over to the cuboid. The wedge of bone is now easily removed and once you've got, you can actually see the articular surface there quite nicely. Once you've got the foot easily loosened up, now we dorsiflex the foot and you can see wonderful correction of that cavus deformity. You've got a step off there at your uh, osteotomy arthrodesis site, rotate the foot, which then lifts up the cuboid and prevents overload laterally. And then we're going to fix it with three Steinman pins. I use three millimeter pins. Three of them usually is quite sufficient to immobilize that osteotomy. I prefer these pins over the use of screws or plate. My hole for the tunnel for the posterior tibial tendon is made here over the cuboid with a 4.5 millimeter drill. That's widened to make sure that the passage of the tendon is correct and I pull it out through the plantar aspect of the foot, make sure that the tendon passes easily in through your tunnel and then tension it on the plantar surface of the foot. Now, once you've got it uh, secure, I'm going to tighten it over a large soft tissue uh, sponge or bolster on the plantar surface of the foot and make sure that I've got adequate dorsiflexion because you want five to 10 degrees of passive dorsiflexion with your transfer. In summary, what I've presented here is management of a rigid cavovarus deformity. It's relevant that this deformity can be corrected without using a triple arthrodesis. And as you've seen with a corrective calcaneal osteotomy, midfoot osteotomy, which includes a navicular cuneiform arthrodesis, plus a vertical osteotomy through the cuboid and appropriate tendon transfers, this has been accomplished. Thank you.